may be getting. You can't always. This is the death. Remarkably him. Turn back. Towards God. Rise up. Hi, I'm Veronica Statch. Welcome to Shalom World's original program, Jesus My Savior, where we give you moving conversion journeys from all over the world. For 12 years, our guest stayed far away from the Catholic Church, instead choosing a life of lust, pleasure, and self-gratification. But unable to fill that never-ending void, a trip to Lourdes showed him God's unmistakable call. Let us welcome Mauro Iannicelli. Hi, I'm Mauro Iannicelli. I am the founder of Come and See Catholic Evangelization Ministries and a Catholic speaker. I am originally from Rome, however, I've been living in London for the last 15 years and I am married to my precious Janet. I was brought up as a cradle Catholic, which you can expect from someone living in Rome. But uh, after finishing high school, I came to see the Catholic Church as a burden and as something which would suppress my freedom. So therefore, I certainly didn't want the church uh, preaching to me with her do's and don'ts. But the Lord had no intention of losing me for good. So he patiently waited for me and uh, when the time was right, he brought me back to him in his unfathomable mercy. And not only did the Lord free me from the sins of premarital sex and of masturbation, but he also gave me a fantastic wife with a big heart for Jesus and called us both to work uh, full time for his kingdom in evangelization. So with the help of my wife, Janet, I now run online Bible studies and courses like the Bible Timeline Courts and others. Now, Jesus Christ is my absolute point of reference. My life revolves around Him. He called me from the womb. He didn't let me go. He fought for my soul and He won me back. Mauro, hello, welcome. It's such a pleasure to have you on our show today. Hi, Veronica, and thank you for having me. Yes, we're so excited to dive into your story. Um, I want to ask first, uh, just honestly, to just dive right in. Um, you know, in your upbringing, how did you perceive Jesus and the, the concept of sin? How did you view that in your youth? I was born in Rome and raised as Catholic there. So as a boy, I uh, attended sacramental preparation in my local parish and I received the sacraments there. So this is how I first came to know about Jesus and how I became aware of the concept of sin. So I attended Sunday Mass most times thanks to the positive influence of my mom. So on a Sunday, my mom didn't say, Mauro, you should go to Mass. But she said, Mauro, let us go to Mass together. So in other words, my mom taught me and led me by example, and that was very important for me. So as a boy, I had a limited understanding of God, to be honest, but still I clearly remember having a strong sense that there was a God and that his name was Jesus Christ. So I had been taught that Jesus was God and that he died for us on the cross to save us. And I believed it. Beautiful, beautiful. And you grew up in Rome, too. <laughs> I love it. I love the little background, too, behind you. Um, it really gives us sort of the ambiance of your youth a little bit, right? Um, so can you share 
um, sort of a glimpse now into your adolescent life, you know, like what did you live for when you were an adolescent? What was sort of your moral code when you were a teenager? As an adolescent, despite being you know, in the church and attending Sunday Mass, my relationship with God was a bit weak. So I lived mainly for myself. I, I strove to do well in my studies. I strove to excel in the sports I was practicing. I, I strove to be held in high esteem uh, by my friends. Um, I would say that my life was pretty much self-centered, but without me being too aware of it back then. So sometimes I prayed, but I just prayed when I needed something from God, typically his help in my exams at school. I did not know how to pray simply to give glory to God back then. Sounds all too familiar, um, Mauro, that sort of really basic relationship with God where we ask mostly for what we need. Um, I could definitely relate to that. But tell me, what is it that pushed you away from the church? So when I became 18, I began to live as the world around me was living. Hmm? That is, I began to date and have girlfriends and uh, enter into sexual relationships with them. And this was something I didn't want to give up in any way. But because of my Catholic upbringing, I was aware of God's commandments. And it was clear to me that the promiscuous kind of life which I, uh, which I had chosen put me uh, in a position of permanent mortal sin. So I knew that I could not receive Holy Communion while living, uh, while living like that. And I also knew that going to confession, in my case, wouldn't work because, well, confession requires repentance. But in my case, I just wanted to live like that. As a consequence, at the age of 18, I made the decision to not receive Holy Communion and uh, remaining quite distant from the church for 12 long years. Yeah, wow, 12. And it was a very conscious decision sort of um, walk away. Now, did you, during those 12 years of sort of living the way the world um, sort of suggests we live, uh, did you have a dark and defining moment, you know, maybe like a rock bottom moment of any sort during that time? Yes, I certainly did. And uh, this was actually what changed everything. Uh, it happened that at the age of 27, the Lord, in his mercy, began his rescue mission to try and bring me back to him. He made me hit rock bottom in my life uh, by giving me a problem that I couldn't solve by myself in any way. Namely, stage fright, the terror of public speaking. That was a huge issue for me because I had just started a career as a business consultant where the ability to deliver presentations to many people was key. So I was stuck. I saw my entire career in danger and I didn't know what to do since whatever I tried to do by myself to overcome the issue of stage fright didn't work. Mm, okay, so that was sort of uh, a dark moment where you realized you were almost powerless. <laughs> for the first time. So what was like the catalyst? So it seems like this was almost kind of a catalyst, but what was sort of that next driving force that um, sort of ignited your return back to Jesus, back to his church? As I said, I found myself unable to overcome my fear of public speaking. And it was at that point that I suddenly remembered that there was a God I could pray to and turn to for his help. That same Jesus that I had come to believe in when I was a boy, but whom I abon abandoned later to live the promiscuous kind of life I wanted. So in that summer 1997, I decided to make a pilgrimage to the shrine of Lourdes in France to cry out to God and to Our Lady and ask for help with my problem. And uh, during that week in Lourdes, it became clear to me that the Lord was there for me and that the issue of stage fright was only the excuse 
the Lord used to make me stop and think and look at him again after so many years. So the issue of stage fright was later resolved, in fact, but what I got out of it was priceless. I began to pray and reconnect, reconnect with God. And uh, during that week in Lourdes, I understood that the Lord was asking me to choose him, to put him first, to return to him and to his church unconditionally. Beautiful. And clearly he has sort of given you the grace to overcome stage fright because here you are, <laughs> you know, for his glory, sharing your story. So um, praise God for that. What was that biggest obstacle for you that was sort of in your way? Um, that was a really big jump for you to make after you sort of started to give your yes. The big issue for me was the same that initially brought me away from the church, namely having to give up any premarital sexual relationships. So I resisted God's prompting to go back to him for three long years and continued to live my life as I wanted. When I turned 30, one thought be um, began to surface in my mind. I, I basically said to myself, well, at some point I will want to get married. And I want it to happen in the Catholic Church. And uh, as a married man, I will want all to be well and right with God. So I will get married in the church and then it will be fine for me to be intimate with my wife. But then I thought, wait a second, what kind of reasoning am I making? I am now living in a condition of mortal sin because I don't want to give up sex before marriage. So I basically say no to God up to the day of my wedding. And on that day, I would present myself in the church asking God to bless the union with my wife and the rest of my life. You see, I could see at that point uh, how this kind of reasoning was flowed because I wasn't giving God the, the first place in my life at all, unconditionally. And I came to see how the right thing to do, you know, before God was to choose him unconditionally, well before entering my vocation in marriage. And the only way to do so was by giving up the unchaste life I was living there and then without waiting any longer. That's so powerful and impossible almost to do without God's grace, right? Um, sometimes it's so easy to think we could just flip a switch, right? Um, so September 26, 2000, I know is a special date for you. Can you share for us what's so special about that date? Um, it happened that at the age of 30, uh, following the realization that I have just described, I began my combat to attain chastity. But uh, unsurprisingly, that was something which looked very difficult to me. So I raised my prayer to God and said, Lord, I, I will try and I will do my best, but you have to help me with this. If you exist, if you really want me back to you, please help me with chastity, as I don't know if I can succeed by myself. So the moment of the big decision came on September 26, 2000, which I regard as the day of my conversion. On that very day, I made my leap of faith and decided to give up all premarital sexual relationships for good, without knowing, you know, without knowing if I would be able to keep this resolution. And I continued to pray, asking for God's help. And the Lord was there for me. So the Lord did give me the grace to live in that new way, namely a chaste life, without any premarital sexual relationships. And obviously we know that that head to heart journey um, is difficult. And even after we say yes, uh, the road is wrought with, with, with obstacles. So did you encounter any further sort of issues or obstacles even after you chose the chaste lifestyle? Uh, yes, there was a very difficult moment in, in this process. The reason being, I didn't know that chastity was more than simply not having sexual intercourse before marriage. In fact, at that point, the Lord made very clear to me uh, one more thing. 
that I also had to stop engaging in the scene of masturbation, as this was also a grave matter in God's eyes and was equally preventing me from receiving Holy Communion and from living a holy life acceptable to God. So it turned out that, uh, you know, giving up masturbation was for me like a second deeper stage of my conversion, which was going to be in a way even more difficult than giving up premarital sexual relationships. In fact, this second stage of conversion took me six months of intense combat. You know, daily prayer and the rosary were absolutely key. Uh, I prayed daily asking God to help me in this area. And I also made frequent records to the help of the sacraments, especially the sacrament of confession every time I fell. And that was equally a key element. So after six months of this combat, the Lord gave me the grace of being free also from the scene of masturbation. So in the year 2001, aged 31, I finally embraced a real chaste life and began my adult faith journey in the Catholic Church. And to fast forward the story, a few years later, I moved to London in the UK. And sometime later, I fell in love with Janet, whom I married two years ago in 2019, fulfilling my vocation to the sacrament of marriage, 19 years after my conversion. Almaro, it's so beautiful how it sort of came full circle and you met Janet. Uh, so I want to ask, obviously, when we choose chastity, um, it's a big yes. It's not a no. It's, it's a big yes to this authentic love. And um, we still practice it within marriage. So how has choosing chastity all those years ago sort of enriched your marriage uh, with Janet? You see, in Catholic theology, the covenant of marriage is a covenant among three persons, not just two. The three persons are the bride, the bridegroom, and God himself. But how could I enter such a covenant with God without fixing my relationship with him beforehand? So choosing chastity before marriage allowed me to do just that. It taught me and allowed me to love in a Christ-like manner, making a gift of myself to my wife in an exclusive way with an undivided heart. So I would like to say something to anyone who might be struggling to live a chaste life. For the sake of your future spouse and for your Christian journey in general, please take steps now to free yourself from any addictions that cause you to live an unchaste life and do so if possible well before entering your vocation, whatever that may be. You see, things like uh, sex outside marriage or pornography or masturbation totally separate us from God because they have a sort of satanic hold over the life of any individual and have the power to destroy any vocation and any Christian journey. That would be my message today. Now, Maro, how has sort of your understanding of Christ's love for you changed over the course of your conversion? During my journey, I experienced a loving, jealous God, a God that after I abandoned him, didn't give up on me, a God that mercifully and patiently waited for me and who gave me at the right time the medicine I needed to come back to my senses and return to him. So I experienced a God who cannot be outdone in generosity. The moment I made one step towards him, to return to him, he made 100 steps towards me to have me back to him. And uh, later in my Christian journey, the Lord brought me to understand in particular how having a structured daily prayer life is essential for any faith journey. After all, you know, God is love and love is relationship and relationship means spending time with one another daily and with God, this means daily prayer. So having a daily time of prayer in the morning has been and still is something absolutely essential in my journey of faith. It's how I live my relationship with Jesus on a daily basis.
I love it. And I love how you painted almost this image of that father welcoming back the prodigal son or prodigal daughter or, or like a, a friend that loves unconditionally. Um, now, since you uh, said your yes or gave your yes and accepted Jesus as your Savior over the course of your entire conversion, can you share a little bit about your life and your ministry uh, moving forward? Entering into a relationship with Almighty God was something extraordinary and life-changing. Uh, you know, to learn that Almighty God did not disdain to become man in the person of Jesus to save me from eternal death by dying on the cross for me was simply mind-blowing. So the good news of Jesus was so revolutionary, revolutionary in my life that as I grew in my faith, I wanted to tell everyone. You see, that's why after my conversion, I felt a huge desire to share the good news of Jesus with others to the point that I founded a ministry of evangelization in which I am now employed full time together with my wife, Janet. It's called Come and See Catholic Evangelization Ministries. I basically uh, discovered that the Lord gave me the charism of teaching, so I am using it in my ministry. You know, your story really shows how um, when we bring shame and addictions and sin out of the dark and into the light, God's just God's all overwhelming love and mercy and forgiveness. It really abounds. So thank you so much. Thank you very much, Veronica, for having me once again. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for watching Jesus, My Savior today. Join us next week here on Shalom World. I'm Veronica Statch, your host, and God bless you. TV is an impressive enterprise using the modern means of communication brings to our world the gospel of Jesus Christ. May their work of evangelization through means of communication be a blessing for all. I commend to you the work and the message especially of Shalom World TV. Their mission is to be fruitful and blessed. They in their own lives as well as those to whom they proclaim the gospel. They are to have blessing. They are to know peace. And to all, may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and those whom you love this day and forever. Amen.